I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with that super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, big day? Feeling better? Yeah, much better. You've had some nose issues, huh? Yeah, I think everybody could hear it too. <laughs> <laughs> you sound nasally, man. That's yeah, okay. And I, I still feel like it a little bit, you know, sound nasally, but I feel 100% now. So this week, our topic is conflict. In today's Connection Thursday, we're going to have a discussion on the conflict of the spiritual journey and entering the void. So I, I decided to go deep today because... If Mark can go deep, why can't I, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Hold on. You have a super millennial technical difficulties. Are you back? Yeah, I can pick it up here. Yep. It's no problem. Conflict is defined as a fight, battle, or struggle. In stress mastery, conflict is an activated program. This program is an activated energy within the red zone. The conflict's energy is designed and built to drive your behavior. Example, someone says something that is not to your liking or your agreement of the program of your particular religion. Immediately, the program, which is your belief about your religion, is hit and you experience a conflict. The conflict of the activated program is in the desire energy, the want of control. This drives the behavior into frustration over what has been said, and this moves you into anger to defend and attack. As you defend your belief on your religion, the person that set off the program the conflict feel the the set off the program and the conflict also this person also feels attacked so they then defend and attack their statement and you have two egos engaged and both parties in perceptual blindness and deaf effect neither can hear the other and we usually have a war <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it sounds crazy, but that's it's it's that bad. You have any yeah. co- comments on that? I, I I think it's funny because like when we say like ego and stuff like that, people think it's like minor or petty, but in reality, that's how how big and how much you know power the ego can have when it's the one running the ship. Absolutely. So when it the, what happens is our spiritual growth will be met by conflict. And that's what we're going to discuss in today's episode. So spiritual seekers are consistently met by conflict. Some seekers state, you can only be saved one way. Others seekers state, you must maintain a certain diet. Other seekers state, there's only one book. While other seekers state, for you to attain spiritual freedom, you only can do that through certain practices. Some believe in angels, while others believe in magic. And honestly, a true spiritual seeker must find the truth, their truth. Do you understand that, David? Yeah, for sure. So when this is truly realized, then all the conflict ends. The reason? The spiritual seeker releases their belief systems. Thus, they enter the void. So I'm going to get a little bit deep here, David, and I'll throw you into it. If you have anything to say, jump in, okay? All right. So allow me to address the conflict of spiritual awakening. At the end of this episode, I will actually give you a meditation that I use, one of the meditations I use to enter the void. The void is emptiness. It is empty space. Entering the void is spiritual awakening. The void is conflict resolution of the spiritual journey. 
So let's start with what a spiritual journey actually is. Embarking on a spiritual journey begins with conflict. The conflict is that your belief systems no longer support the life you desire and your current reality you live. And it is a strange journey because conflict becomes the journey itself. Are you with me? Do you have any comments on that? No, not yet. I'm trying to see where you go with this. (laughs) So this is a strange journey. Conflict becomes the journey itself. And most people run from conflict. They don't like confrontation. And these people are then stuck in the reality that they currently live in. See, your belief systems set your vibration. Your belief systems are the programs you hold in mind. Your belief system set your vibration. Your vibration creates your reality. The human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is set by what is held in mind. This behavior cannot change unless you change your beliefs. Your beliefs are what sets your perception, and your perception is the bridge to your reality. It is this that drives your behavior. And it is this that you attract in your life. Your thoughts, Dave. Yeah, it's funny because I'm getting to the point where um, I'm watching all my high school friends kind of grow up. You know, we're all like kind of really becoming adults now. And it's interesting to watch the ones that are still acting the same way as they were in high school. They're still the same person, like down to the T with the same issues and struggles that we had in high school. And then I watch a lot of the other people completely change those behaviors. And now they're completely different people, but they've gone in a, in a much different direction. Just seeing how that everyday behavior staying with them, kept them the same person. Nothing has changed. And that, that's so important to understand because we're going to get deep today because I want people to understand that spiritual journey is a simple journey. It's a simple journey to discover who you are. Not who you believe you are, not who you were told you are. No, the spiritual journey is discovering who you are. The spiritual journey is when one moves from self-improvement into self-transformation. When we seek self-improvement, we look to improve the self. We want to improve behavior, to improve our career, to improve our money situation, In self-improvement, we look to change the self so we can have better health, better habits, and create more connected relationships. Now, self-improvement is very important for it is the base to truly begin a spiritual journey. Do you understand that, David? Because it's important. Yeah, that that for me, that step right there opened me to become open-minded about transitioning further out than just personal development and things like that. Because when we look at self-improvement, we're looking to improve the self so we can maintain more conscious mind control, thus dictate our behavior in a conscious manner. Now, self-transformation is a little different. This is literally losing the self. It's being over the ego and it's letting the ego go. This is stage five of development, interconnected mind, and stage six of development, the intellectual enlightenment. The spiritual journey is embarking on a journey to lose the self. And this is a much deeper journey than most people understand, for it is a journey that will be wrapped in conflict. Are you with me? Yeah, so far. I see where you're going. I'm having fun in this one. Yeah. (laughs) So most spiritual seekers are looking to get away from conflict. Think about it. If somebody's on a spiritual, they're seeking spirituality, they're seeking religion, they're looking to get away from conflict. They seek conflict love, joy, and peace. Correct? Yeah. Yet, they seek love, joy, and peace, yet they live frustrated in the, and and they live frustrated, they live angry, and the fact is, the more they seek peace, the more conflict they seem to attract. And they are not wrong. 
Mm -hmm. There's a reason this happens. We cannot seek love, joy, and peace, for it cannot be found outside ourselves. Spiritual seekers, if they truly desire to attain love, joy, and peace, must look within, not without. And when we honestly look within on the path, what do we find? Conflict. Yeah. The reason we find conflict is conflict is the spiritual practice and the resolution is the spiritual path. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I think that was one of the biggest things that I I wish I would have known starting is I thought everything was going to become easier as I started to work on myself, spiritual and personal development, both of them. And as I started to go, I started to realize that there is a lot more issues, conflicts arising in my life. And it was because I was starting to notice them and deal with them instead of just letting them brush by or me burying them. And that was one of the things. It's not that it got harder. It was just I had that awareness and I was dealing with them instead of just ignoring it now. It's called waking up. It's called becoming conscious. Being so woke, as you like it's to say. It's being woke, right? So <laughs> if you wish to grow your understanding of God, you must release your understanding of God. I'm going to say it again. I get that one. If you wish to grow your understanding of God, you must release your understanding of God. How can you grow your understanding of God if you believe in God? Every single belief is a program. And you were not born with a belief in God. You weren't born with any beliefs. People believe they are on a spiritual path because they believe in God or spirit or energy. Yet these same people who scream, I'm a believer, live in frustration, anger, worry, sadness, fear, and guilt. Yes, they believe in God or spirit. They can quote books, teachings, rules, yet they fail to find love, joy, and peace as a state. Instead, it's frustration, anger, fear, guilt, and shame. Why? Because to believe in God is not to know God. These are two very different states of being. To believe in God gives you hope. To know God is to live in faith. The true spiritual seeker, whether they realize it or not, desires to know God. They seek love, joy, and peace, yet little do they know they already possess love, joy, and peace. It's within. It's God. How does one attain this Knowing of God. That's the question we have to ask. Do you understand? Yeah, for sure. You want to talk or no? Well, well, see, this this will be where, where for me, my understanding started to come after. I, I said this many times, I left church. And the reason why I left church wasn't because I didn't believe in God or anything like that anymore. It was because I thought I knew it all already. I went to church, I get my tithings, I pray at night, I pray when I wake up, and I thought that's all it was, and it wasn't, it didn't feel, I didn't have anything felt inside of me, it just felt like I was having a routine, and the moment I left to start searching was the first time I actually felt something, because I felt like I didn't know. There you go, That's and that's a start, because how does one attain a knowing of God? It's done through conflict and discovering the void. That's how it's done. As one truly begins the spiritual path, they will be met with conflict. Let's say you make a decision to be more calm and peaceful. I'm going to be a peaceful person. I'm going to be calm. And you tell yourself, I'm not going to get upset anymore. I'm going to be calm and I'm going to be peaceful. And about this time, your car will break down. (laughs) Or you get into a fight with a family member. On cue, something will disrupt your path path to remain calm and peaceful. This may seem like a block to your path, yet it is not. It is the path. 
You see, the conflict activated by your car breaking down, activating the want of control, hitting the want of security as you're all worried about how I'm going to pay for this. This is a bad time to have this happen. I can't believe this is happening now. All of this is the spiritual path. Every conflict gives you the opportunity to exercise conflict resolution. It is this process that allows us to let go of programs, beliefs held in the mind. It is this process that raises your vibration. It is this process that changes your reality. So you start your path to be calm and peaceful and right on cue, you have a huge fight with a family member. The fight may even be about your new spiritual path. The family member disagrees with you meditating or practicing something outside the tribe's religion or beliefs. Again, this is a perfect for your, this is absolutely perfect for your spiritual path. You feel you want to defend your situation. You feel you want to attack the family member's beliefs. This is the change. This is when, when true change happens because this is the chance to let go of the want of control and the want to belong. So let us say you actually do lose your temper and you fall into judgment and reaction and you overreact. You lose your temper. You break out of peace and calm. It is still a perfect spiritual path. You now get the opportunity to let go of guilt. You now get the opportunity to forgive and ask for forgiveness and let go of resentment. This is all part. It's a perfect spiritual path. This is the path of knowing. It is the connection to your true higher self. And do you understand that, Dave, that it's not what people think. It is actually the conflict is the path. Yeah, that that was something that I always realized that like, I always said, man, this is coming at the worst time, but then realized that it was actually a perfect timing for it. It was always that challenge of me becoming the person who overcomes it or the person who's a victim. Oh, of course this would happen to me now. Of course this was happened to me now. And I used to change my like, you know what? At least it happened to me now. It's an inconvenience, but I could get through it. And that's what always made me grow. Now, you may not remember when you started your, your self-improvement path and you really started working on it, Every t- your car kept breaking down. It'd be a flat oh, tire. I, 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 re- would be a- I remember. A brand new car broke down me on the yep. middle of a back road. Under warranty, it was still $1,800. I remember yep. it like it was yesterday. And I remember <laughs> then Then you'd be driving down the road. You just got your car right. And what happened? Yep. Something hits the grill. Wasn't it an yeah. animal or something? Animal. Yeah. All of that is part of your path. You see, if you are truly ready to find that knowing that we're talking about, you must let go of your beliefs. You must let go of your beliefs that drive your current behaviors. For it is these beliefs that makes up your current identity. And it is the release of your current identity that reconnects you to your soul, your authentic life purpose, and allows you to embody your true nature. When you enter a true spiritual journey, you move from self-improvement to self-transformation, and you enter the void. What is the void? It is finding the now. In the now, there are no stories, no past, no future. You are in the isness of life. In the void of finding the now, there are no beliefs, yet there's knowing and faith. So when do we know if we are being called toward a spiritual journey? Because it really does become a journey. It's it's not what people think. Well, I had this happen when I was with the medical clinics in Miami. And I had a calling. And even though I had everything, and I'll share my journey, I had everything where I just had life on cruise control. I could basically show up or not show up, making money, 
left and right. And it was easy. Life was easy. And that was after years of work. But it this is what happened to me. These are the kind of the steps I'll give you that happened that told me that I was being called toward another journey. Number one, you start to feel lost in life. The feeling of being lost requires you to slow down. Does it feel right? And you have to slow down and there's like a spark within and you feel lost and you have to slow down and ask, what is the spark? That's number one. You'll feel lost. Number two, you begin to wonder what your purpose and meaning are. Like I had built this wonderful thing, but there was more to be done. And I, I questioned myself, my purpose. You begin to question everything everything. And you really wonder, what is the purpose of these clinics? What is my purpose here? Number three, you begin to feel like there's a destiny, some type of destiny to fulfill. There's this drive, but here's the thing. It has not been revealed yet. (laughs) It's like this feeling, well, I know I got to go do something. And poor David, you went on that ride with me, had an idea, but I had no idea. Because it wasn't revealed yet of what we were supposed to do. And that's number three. You feel like there's a a destiny to fulfill. And that, that, that something's coming from within. Number four, you have a sense that there's much more to life than your current reality. I had, well, you saw, we lived on the water, the ocean, a condo in one of the most beautiful places. We had, we had everything. But there was a sense that none of it meant anything. There was a sense to me that there's much more to life than money. There was much more to life than these clinics. There's much more to my current reality. So that's a fourth thing. You have a sense there's just that there's just much more to life than what you're living now. And number five, you to start the spiritual journey, to really go on a spiritual journey, you have had incredible success in self-improvement. So you, you've, you have shed a lot of your old self, yet you feel you are transforming, but you don't know who you truly are yet. You've done all this spirit. I've done all this self-improvement, done all these things, all five life categories, but I quite didn't know who am I. And that's what you get to feel. That's when self-improvement must move into self-transformation. It's very different. And number six, you notice that a lot of what you once valued seems meaningless and empty. (laughs) Like my closet full of uh, $100,000 worth of watches. I don't care. (laughs) I don't even wear. What do I, I never, do I ever wear them? No, I wear my Apple Watch. I never wear them. I, they mean, I look at them and I go, what am I, what was that? You just notice that they're things that you once valued seem meaningless and empty. They just, they're not important. Even I asked about the Corvette today. Hey, have you started the Corvette? No, the battery's dead, Bill. That's how much the Corvette means to me now. I didn't know yeah, the battery well, you know, was dead. And I've shared my story about the car a long time, man. I haven't driven that thing in almost a year. And before it would be down for like three days and I'd, I'd be losing I, it. <laughs> it's changed. It's a change that you, it, it's not something that you're trying to do. It is happening to you. Yeah. And number seven, and I got to be honest, and this is really important for me to be honest about this. You literally feel like a rug has pulled out from underneath you and you feel like you're falling. You want to run back into the security of the cage, but you just can't do it. You move, you begin to move out in faith, but you really are truly scared shitless. Thus, you enter the void. So this is the spiritual path of moving from spiritual, from, I'm sorry, from self-improvement to self-transformation. And during this sojourn, many things will change and many lessons will present themselves. And here's the important thing. You're moving in faith. You have to be open to consistent change, conflict resolution, and open to losing your current reality. So do you have anything? I'm going to talk. I'm going to close this episode and I'm going to discuss entering the void during meditation. 
Do you have anything you want to add to what we just, those things, those lists I just gave you? Well, I think the, the last one where you said that you start to kind of turn into somebody without trying, you know, how you progress yourself. That's why, like, you know, in the beginning, and I know a lot of either millennials or people who are just starting, when you look at these people who've done personal development, you're always wondering, like, why are they going so deep into it? Why are they like, you know, it seems like everybody's almost an extremist because like they want to learn more. They want to go more. It's not because they are like trying to do it. It's just at, you get to that point and you want to learn more. That's why you hear Bill ask say all the time, you're going to ask me questions about this, aren't you? It's just because I know there's more out there that I don't know. And it's not that I'm trying. It's just, it, it kind of gravitates towards you as you start to move up and you progress as you start to grow and it all stem from the personal development. Cause I always thought the spiritual stuff was like the, what do you hocus pocus? Like you always said. And to me, once I got to the end of the personal development, like side where I felt good enough to have at least habits down, I was like, there has to be more than this. this. Yeah, that's what and happens, then I wanted exactly. to learn and it fell into it. It was never forced. So we talk about the, the conflict of the spiritual journey is the conflict. The conflict is the journey. That's the conflict. And, and yeah. people understand that every single time you have a conflict and you do conflict resolution, you are changing everything in your life because you are changing your vibration because you're releasing that identity, that self, that ego, you're releasing it. And when you release that, it's opening up a void in the void is finding a now. So I want to close this. I want to I want to talk a little bit on meditation today, just a type of meditation. In Kriya Yoga, which I'm talking about now, there are many levels of Kriya and techniques, by the way. The purpose of Kriya is to raise your life energy. Remember what Sadhguru said, and I think, and he's absolutely right. If you master the body, you put 15 to 20 percent of your destiny in your hands. If you master the body and the mind, you put 50 to 60% of your destiny in your hands. That's a good place to be. That is self-improvement. That's a mm -hmm. lot. That's a, a, that's a happy person, not necessarily a peaceful person. Because when you master life energy, and that's where the spiritual path and journey begins, you put 100% of your destiny in your life. One of the things that Sadhguru does teaches Kriya Yoga, and there are many levels of Kriya and techniques. And the purpose is to raise the life energy. So, in the meditation that is taught, one of the meditations that's taught, the pre procedure, it's a concentration meditation. It's what it's designed. It's called a concentration meditation. So, when I teach meditation to my clients, every client has meditation. I'm using technology in the beginning, such as apps. The muse, which we use in a green focus power hour, meditation comes after the other exercises. And there's a purpose behind that. The reason that you, you read and then you journal, uh, you read affirmations, you journal, visualization comes before meditation is because it's prepping you to be able to meditate. So if you're skipping that stuff and just jumping into meditation, you're not putting the body and mind into a proper state to meditate deeply. So I always warn people against, you know, shortcuts because I believe me, there's no shortcut. Now, yet once you get the mind and body set for meditation, and actually that's what yoga is designed to do. Yoga, yoga is union. It is yoga's design to get you ready to meditate. So first thing you must do for meditation to become a successful practice, and it's about entering the void. One, meditation must become a skill. You must create a skill of consistent practice. This is essential. If you fail to do this, you will not open deep concentration. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's about doing it day in, day out, and never missing. That is the consistency it takes to open up the meditation I'm about to discuss. If you don't have that, you're not opening it up. It's just, it's, it's just not going to happen. So that's number one. Number two, you must understand the proper meditation. You have to have a meditation seat. That means it's your meditation seat. Some people do lotus position. I do a chair. And 
the most important thing in your meditation is that your spine is straight. You're not sitting against a chair. You are sitting with your spine straight. Now, can you do this in a corpse position, laying down? Yes, you can, but it's hard to raise the energy that way. It is very hard. So now I'm not going to, real, real quick, the, the people who are kind of get into it, that was harder for me because I, I used to get tired. Meditation was very like calming. I used to fall asleep all the freaking time. So I had to sit up because I would not get through it anymore. And you shouldn't lay down and do it anyways. If you're, if you're, if you're physically capable, if you have, you can't sit, that's one thing. Then you need to work on strengthening up that core muscles, right? Yeah. But you need to sit. You need to have a nice seat. Mm -hmm. You see my one chair. I have a special chair for just meditation. That's all that chair is used for is meditation because it sets me in a perfect posture. So that's number two. You got to create your, you have to find your proper seat. And number three, to go into this concentration meditation, which is a deep meditation, this brings you into the void. To do this, you must have silence real silence. So this meditation cannot be done with an app. Can't use the muse for it. Listen to birds. You don't have music. It's got to be silence. And it's to the point where my morning, nobody's up. So I have silence. But sometimes after, after we're done recording, you might be out in a living room. Kevin might be out there. I actually have earplugs I use so I can do my night meditation. Because it's not, I don't have the right to tell them to shut up. It just, that's not the way uh, spiritual path works. You have or a Puerto work, Rican but, house. Or a Puerto Rican house. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so you've got to have silence. You understand that, right? Yep. So here in your seat, you got the silence and you're going to work on opening the third eye. The third eye is the sixth chakra. It's the space between your eyebrows. Now, when people try to open up the third eye, they focus on the outside themselves. They focus on that space between eyebrows. And most people believe you focus just on that area and they're wrong. You actually hold your gaze up to the third eye. So you're looking at the third eye. You hold your eyes up. Your gaze is at the third eye point, the six chakra point. And it's very important to keep your head straight because a lot of people have a tendency to want to look up because her eyes went up, but you got to keep your head straight. And then you actually focus on the back of the head. Where the neck and the head come together, there's a little notch. If you reach behind you, you'll feel a little notch. This has been called God's mouth. You actually focus from that notch in the back of the head and imagine an arrow going from the back of the head to the third eye. That's how you focus on that chakra. You don't open that chakra or this concentration meditation from the outside. It's done from within. That's how you set up the meditation from within. And you focus on the third eye from within. The Bruma, I guess it's called the Bruma Daya. This is what it's called. I should use some of the Sanskrit words, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but you open, you focus on that third eye from within. And with practice, you will see a light. And you focus on the light. That's what you're focusing on, to open up the light. And I can go into the science behind that, the pineal gland and everything else, but I'm not going to. You focus on light. Now, when you get into the deep concentration meditation, you may start to hear internal sounds. For sure, you will hear the hum of your nervous system. You can literally hear your nervous system hum. But there are times where you will hear the ohm sound. Usually I hear it in the right ear and you'll hear, oh, oh, you'll actually hear it. When you hear that, focus on that sound while holding your gaze because that sound, that ohm sound will take you deeper and deeper into the void. This meditation of concentration is held for five to 25 minutes and you do not let the eyes drift downward. Now, if you have done no meditation, this is not an easy meditation to do. If you've done breath, vipassana meditation, that's good. If you do apps, you've used that, that's good. You got to first, before you could try this meditation, and I'm giving a connection Thursday, something deeper, but to try this meditation, you have to have the practice, the skill of meditation down. You've been meditating for a little while in that, because this is a meditation that is deep. 
And when you when you can open up that third eye, not only does it enhance your health, it raises your vibration. You come out of those meditations completely in a different state. David. Yeah, this this was something that there's there's two things I, I've learned from this. And this is the beginning of when I started doing this to like when I do this now. In the beginning, I was getting frustrated because I couldn't feel focus on my third eye, the gaze. I was getting upset and I realized I shouldn't be doing this if I'm getting upset about meditation. The same thing about the ohm. I was like, I don't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. And I was still in the beginning of person, like the spirituality and just meditating. So like you said, having that practice down now, I could describe it. it for me, it feels like if you took a laser pointer, put it right in, in right between the my eyes and it didn't stop here and it continued going. The ohm, I first time that I ever was able to get remotely close and it's hard even for me at, at certain points is because I start telling stories. What is that? Is that the AC? And it goes away exactly. and it immediately disappears. Exactly, and I start making stories David. about the yes. noise instead of just yes. listening to it and going through it. And that's how it was. I was like, man, yeah. this, this, this point, I feel like I'm going cross-eyed. And the moment where I start to make these stories up, it disappears. I don't feel a gaze. I don't hear a noise. And that's how I know I'm still battling back and forth with the ego. And, and that the ego will be still very a active. Yeah, it's a that's win because the ego is going to be active. I noticed yeah. it. Yes. Yes. So that's what I would say. If you yep. have had the practice and you're going through this and you just have the small awareness and you get glimpses of them, perfect. Because for and me, I just get starting- only glimpses. You're just starting. I wouldn't recommend this at all. I like no. the Muse. I like the Muse device, and it works really well for training meditation. Uh-huh. I like um, the what is the app? I like the Mindful app. That's really good. Um, my I think it's Mindful app. I think something it's, MySpace, isn't it mindful? not MySpace. I, I don't know what it is, but it's uh, really good. You have good ones on there. But here's the thing: you have to prepare the body and mind. I have a whole routine before I sit down and meditate. I've already done my tapping. I've already taken a headspace. shower. Sorry. Yeah, headspace. Thank you. I've already done my tapping. I've already taken a shower. I've already done my kriyas. I've already done that. Then I meditate. And so I'm going to one of the new things in the new module that we're putting in. It's called the five rights exercise. You can literally do it in in ten minutes. And this exercise can prep you for meditation. Yoga is great exercise for prepping for meditation. You have to do things. You can't force this. And David's right. Do not go in with expectations. If you want to go in, oh, I never hear the ohm. You're never going to hear the ohm. You're not going to hear it. Now, here's the thing. The light, I always see light. I don't always hear the ohm. Sometimes it's not there. I don't care. But the light's always there. You can always open up the light. Always. Yeah. Sometimes it's deep. Sometimes it's purple. Sometimes it's bright. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. But you always can open that up. The OM is a deep concentration. But this, again, is a, a more advanced meditation. Very advanced. And it's called a concentration meditation. They teach it in Kriya. So this is one of the meditations they teach. And I don't see any harm in talking about this. You know, so, I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't, but I, I don't know. Remember, my whole thing is I don't care anymore. So. Yeah. Anything yeah, else? Sure. Got? No, I just got think go, go, take it with a grain of salt. Remember that meditation is like a workout. You know, yeah. there's different ways, different reasons to meditate and just go with – it's always a win if you attempted it. If you at least attempt it, it's a win because yeah. every day no, you no, skip it's, it, it's practice. a loss. Yeah. Practice. Sorry, I apologize for Super Millennial running the show over so long, but that is it for today's show. Our mission here is the greatest shift in a planet. And as you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe, links are right below the show. As always, until next time, slow down.